Oh, hi guys, uh, Tobias here, and today's video we're going to be recrafting these pair of vintage floor shop imperials, specifically the model number 92649. Uh, this particular pair is a black shell cordovan. Uh, for those of you that don't know what shell cordovan is, it is essentially made from a horse's ass. A horse's ass. A horse's ass. Uh, it's a really tough leather, it's beautiful leather, and very, very durable. So. I love this leather and we work with this a lot. Lately here we've been seeing a lot of popularity growing around these shoes and so in this video we're just going to touch base a little bit on why these have become popular again um, and some of the things to just kind of expect when you seek out your own pair uh, and, and some of the things to expect when you bring them into a shop. Uh, to be recrafted and maybe even some of the things to look for. Now this particular pair is all original still. It has the original heel to it and then the and these things again they're notorious for their five uh, nail pattern and their V cleat heel um, also known as a suicide heel which we'll touch base on that a little bit more. Um, so that being said let's get into it and do what we do. <laughs> So now before we get into these, I just wanted to touch base a little bit about um, the heel that comes on these vintage shoes. Uh, they nicknamed it a suicide heel. And now I know what you might be thinking, how could a heel on a shoe possibly push a man into a deep, deep depression where he starts to alienate his friends and start reconsidering his life choices, like becoming a cobbler and making YouTube videos on shoe recrafting, but no, no, that's not it at all. It's actually because they're just really slippery. So instead of going back to a leather sole and a leather heel, this customer wants a lot of grip. Uh, so we're going to change up this sole and we're going to add the ultimate grip. If you look here, we have the Vibram 430 sole, also known as the Mini Lug sole. It is a oil resistant and slip resistant sole, and this will be just what the customer would like. So now if you watched our other video, you might be thinking that here is the time where we play some music and get in some slow-mo shots. But this one, we're going to do it action style. I kind of wanted to go over um, on vintage shoes and what to kind of expect or what to even look for when you're purchasing a pair. Uh, now, like I said in the beginning, these are a shell cordovan, uh, which is a really tough leather, but shell cordovan does have a period in where it gets so dry that it'll start to crack. And once it's cracked, unlike calfskin, it cannot be repaired. Um, and it really, we seem to find that once it starts to crack somewhere, it'll start to crack a lot of other places. So some of the things to look for when you're purchasing or shopping online for an old vintage shoe um, is get some close-up pictures. We see a lot of cracking in this back area on the shoe a lot and then around the eyelets as well. So this particular person wants to change out the welting to a natural welting, um, but we usually try to push new welting on on these shoes when you get them recrafted anyways just because that leather 
it, it sees a lot of wear and tear and it becomes very dry and brittle and a lot of times when we have to go back through and pick these old stitches out and restitch it, it just beats these welts up. Uh, so having a nice new fresh welt on there will keep these shoes going a lot longer and you can get them recrafted over and over again uh, during the lifetime that you have them. Um, another thing that this customer is going to do, like I said, Shell cordum is notorious for cracking around the eyelets, so we're actually going to add some eyelets, some metal eyelets to these, just a kind of a preventative maintenance to keep that from tearing. They do already have what's called a hidden blind eyelet, so they have eyelets on the on the inside, but that doesn't always do the full job. So we're going to put eyelets all the way through and give these things the protection they need. on there but I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about filler options and what I mean by that is on a Goodyear welted shoe you have this kind of voided area on underneath the footbed. Uh, now a lot of shoe, shoe companies what they do is they, they use a filler material uh, and you have some options on filler material. You have cork which is the most common, we have foam and then we have leather. Um, some of the differences are that cork will take your foot impression, it's lightweight it's really comfortable. Uh, foam is also lightweight, really comfortable. It doesn't take your foot impression nearly as much. Leather, on the other hand, is a little bit heavier. Not significantly, but a little bit heavier. And it, it takes your impression over time. So it does take a little bit longer to break in. Uh, and t normally in our repair shop, we just replace whatever the shoe came with. If it came with foam, we replace it with foam, etc. Uh, this particular shoe came with cork. Uh, so that being said, there are a couple of different options in the cork. You have your hot filler cork. Um, it comes really hot and it gets put on like peanut butter. You spread it in there. It, it gets in all the grooves and corners and everything. But then you, it's lumpy. You have to sand it down flat. Um, and then you have sheet cork. It comes in this, this already pressed sheet. We prefer to use sheet cork simply because, and especially on a used shoe, uh, when you have somebody else's footprint in the footbed, uh, you want everything that you're going to be putting on there to be flat. It'll push out the footprint as best we can, whereas a hot filler cork, uh, once you sand that flat, you still have that same curve and, and footprint in the footbed. So if it's not a used shoe and this is your shoe and you're getting it recrafted, hot filler cork is just fine. Uh, this pair, I believe, was, you know, like it's a vintage shoe. The guy rebought it, and so we're going to try to make this his own so he can put his own footprint in it. Uh, that being said, so now that we know what we do, let's get our, our cork in here and our shank in here and we'll get to sanding it.
more soap put on there. And I'm really liking the way that these are starting to look. Um, they have a, a good classic look to them still, but it's starting to get a little bit more modern. Uh, so we have the, the rubber outsole on there, and I want to talk to you a little bit about stitching and dropping that stitch into a channel. Uh, we channel all of our stitching. It helps protect the stitching. It's not always necessary, um, especially with the way that glues are made now. The stitching doesn't really do 100% of the job of keeping that sole on. A lot of the times the glue will hold just fine. Um, so this is a red wing boot and it has the same sole in brown um, and a lot of manufacturers they don't even channel their stitch. They put that stitch right on top of there and within a first couple of wears you already break through that stitching. If that was an issue they wouldn't do it. So it's not really a big issue but we like to channel our stitching. It keeps that stitching intact a little bit longer and we try to get a lot more wear out of your sole before the stitching breaks loose and it comes loose on the side. So. It's just kind of important to us, so let's get to that process. turned out. They, like you saw before, they were all black shoe. We broke that up nicely with the natural welt, the natural midsole, and then the black outsole to give him that serious grit. Um, like I said, we're going from a slip to a grit. We had we got rid of that suicide heel and the leather sole and gave him this Vibram rubber sole and, and it's, it's really just changed this shoe around and I love it. Um, just wanted to touch base again on some of the things that we did to it. So we did change that welt out. A lot of times on these vintage shoes the welt will dry and, and get really beat up and then when you go to stitch it and pick out the old stitches and stuff it just crumbles. So we always try to push, especially on, on these vintage shoes, a new welt to keep these shoes going a lot longer. Um, and we edit these eyelets. Now the customer did contact us right before we did the eyelets on these and originally he wanted to do an antique eyelet uh, but he switched to black and I actually really like the choice that he made. I think it really flows well with this shoe. Uh, the reason why we do the eyelets is because, like I mentioned before, is a lot of times you'll see on these vintage shoes, they've been sitting up for a long time, the, the leather hasn't been treated or conditioned properly, and you get some aging through the leather and cracking. And a lot of times that cracking happens in the eyelets from it getting pulled too tight when they're laced up, or around the back of the heel here from their foot going in and not using a shoehorn. Um, and on shell cordovan, if you see any kind of cracking, you're going to see more cracking. You can't fix the cracking. There's nothing you can do about it. On calf skin, leather, there's a little bit more that you can do with cracking, um, but on shell cordovan, you just can't. So keep that in mind if you're shopping for your own pair to uh, just avoid any shoes like that. Another thing to avoid when shopping for these is a shoe that has been clearly resold multiple times. Uh, you don't know the damage that's been caused from from previous repairs and it's just best to find a solid shoe that has the original sole. Whether the original sole is in good shape or not, um, it's best to find a shoe and recraft it if it's if it's in its original condition. So 
Um, again, I had a whole lot of fun doing these. I really love the way that they turned out. If you have any questions, let us know.